Welcome to St. George's for Noonday Prayers. Uh, if you are following it in the Book of Common Prayer, you'll find the little service on page 138. Have a moment of silence. And here are two or three verses from Psalm 113. Give praise, your servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed from this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Isaiah wrote, O God, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are fixed on you. For in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and trust shall be our strength. I'm going to read now just a few verses from the beginning of Psalm 37. Fret not yourselves because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers. For they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. I could go on and on with that psalm, but uh, we'll just look at those few verses. One of my heroes who I read about and uh, sort of bonded with when I was younger was a man called Peter Marshall. He was a Scot and uh, he came to the United States uh, in the 1920s and came and uh, came to seminary and was ordained in the Presbyterian Church and was pastor of New York Presbyterian Church in Washington DC for many years as well as chaplain to the Senate. He was a great preacher. And one of the stories which I remember from one of his sermons was about a parishioner who came to visit him and said, Pastor, I need your help. And so Peter Marshall said to him, well, what can I do? He said, oh, as you know, I'm, I'm the, the, the CEO of a, of, a, of a fairly large corporation and uh, my secretary, my uh, personal assistant, uh, is someone who is very important for my work and to keep it organized and so on. And I've depended on her for an enormous amount. He said, I've been praying that the Lord will give me patience. And as I started praying, she came to tell me that she was expecting a baby and she was going to be leaving her job. So I eventually hired a new uh, person to take her place. And she's wonderful. She's incredibly good. But here's the problem. She is so slow. He said, I've been praying that God will give me patience, but uh, I don't know how much longer I can stand this. Peter Marshall sat back and he said, well, let me suggest to you that the Lord answered your prayer. He said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, she is teaching you patience. That's often how life comes at us. And one of the things about me, as well as a lot of other people, is that we wrestle with our lack of patience. 
In fact, someone once said that the population of the United States was self-selecting from all the most impatient people in the world. I plead guilty as an immigrant to the United States. I self-selected. I fit here far better than I do in other places like England where I came from. The psalm which we looked at is about all sorts of things, but one of the great verses in it is, Be still before the Lord, wait patiently for him, and then just a couple of verses over, and he will give you the desire of your heart. Patience begins with waiting on God and letting God do the guiding and God do the leading. <coughs> Patience begins with seeking to handle uh, frustrating circumstances in a patient way and with a generosity which we may not otherwise have. So if patience is your issue, look at Psalm 37. Remember the words of Peter Marshall, that if a circumstance comes along which makes you feel incredibly impatient, perhaps it is that God's answering your prayers that you be more patient. <coughs> We're going to pray now. And we're going to begin by lifting to God some of the members of St. George's. And I'd ask you too, to think of people who are especially known to you that you would like to pray for at this time. Angela, Bob, Julia, Bobby, Connor, Ryan, Sean, Caldwell, Carolyn, Steve, Libby, Stephanie, Peter, Grace, Will, and Hannah. So if you'd like to add in your own hearts names of people you're concerned for. Lord, we lift each of these people to you in Jesus' name. Now, some prayers which have been used in the church for centuries in the morning and noontime. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly, humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect wisdom. Defend us, your humble, assolver, uh, humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now let us join together and say the prayer which our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us with your Spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honour of your name. Amen. Blessed our Lord, Saviour, at this hour you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms. 
Grant that all the peoples of the earth may look to you and be saved for your mercy's sake. Amen. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.